Thank you very much for coming again. So I'd like to continue uh, my uh, lecture. So uh, let's recall some uh, notations yesterday. So if I introduce uh, L by L matrix Q, uh, depending on the L tuple of variables A and the spectral parameter Y, like this. This. And so for discrete carry V, um, we uh, have a Lux matrix as the multiplication of this Q as so Q U times Q uh, U O uh, sorry delta over U. So this is a Lux matrix for discrete KDB and for discrete TODA we have L a Lux matrix as a P inverse. This is a Q zero a Q zero inverse and a Q W Q Q. So please uh, recall on this notation. Then uh, from now, I uh, show some interpretation of these uh, Lux matrices uh, by using network, so combinatorial uh, thing. Lux matrix. And uh, for that purpose, I'd like to use uh, some uh, concrete model called highway, highway pass model. And studied by Lam, Thomas Lam and uh, Pasha Piriavsky. in 2012. So, uh, but actually this model is totally, is, was not totally new, but uh, it, in its back, uh, background, there are several related topics um, introduced by Postonikov as a network to uh, describe a gross manual or something. And uh, Berenstein, Fomin, Zerbinski also introduced a very uh, similar thing. Um, but, uh, uh, how to say, this name <laughs> was given by them, and uh, they introduced uh, uh, interpretation to use measurement of, uh, in some specific way. So let sigma uh, orientable surface and on this surface uh, we draw a network network, it is a directed network. Consisting of uh, directed wires on the network. And uh, we assume that uh, so sinks and uh, sources, so, so sources are, are on the boundary of this surface, and we assume that all crossings are like the crossing of two only two wires. Then uh, on the crossing, uh, we assign a variable Q, for example. Then uh, this is a typical uh, example of a network on the cylinder. So uh, we have three sources and three sinks, for example. And uh, we draw like this. We also have one cyclic wire. And in this case, we have five uh, crossings. 
one, two, three, four, five, and I name them Q1, uh, Q2, Q3, Q4, and Q5, for example. So for such a network, uh, they defined the measurement in the following way. So uh, this is a highway path measurement. So if you meet um, this crossing with parameter Q, then uh, if you uh, go uh, from left to right, then its measurement at this crossing is Q. Then if you go from left to the top, ah, sorry, it should be in yellow. If the top, its measurement is one. And uh, we have uh, other two possibilities. So if you come from uh, below to right, oh, sorry, again, then its measurement is one again. And exceptional is, so if you want to go from uh, below to top, then it is not allowed. It means that uh, the measurement is zero. So we are not allowed to go this way, only allowed to these three uh, cases. Then uh, we can define the boundary measurement, Lij, uh, from the I sink to the J source. Uh, it is a summation of the weight of all possible uh, paths from I to J. And each uh, weight or measurement is given by the multiplication of all measurement at uh, closing the path has. So uh, the closing in P for each path, uh, we multiply uh, the uh, measurement. At the vertex. So it should be Q or one. It, it is a finite sum in general because uh, we assume that hmm? yes, uh, yes, sorry. <laughs> the path is uh, uh, just the usual path from a uh, source, some source to sync by following the network directed. You should follow the direction of uh, the wire. So, uh, for example, uh, in this case, uh, from one to one, uh, we only have one possible path, actually. So we first go this way and this way. Uh, sorry, this way and this way and this way. This is the only path, uh, actually, uh, because Right, right, that's the point. Yeah, that's the point, thank you. So, um, so if we are allowed to have uh, this configuration with non-zero measurement, then as, as uh, Sylvia said, so uh, there should be some uh, infinite pass of cards. But uh, so in that case, uh, we have a model uh, called underway pass. So <laughs> there are some duality uh, between this setting. If you allow this or this. So, but today I only uh, consider this highway bus configuration. So LIJ is called a boundary measurement. And um, by uh, using I and J to be all sequence sources, and we get um, some matrix, boundary measurement matrix. Then uh, this, by taking uh, that example, uh, for example, so, we have 
L11, for example, is it includes only a pass uh, like that. So maybe I, so the weight measurement is Q1 and 1. So Q1 times 1 gives a boundary measurement Q1 in this case. And as other example, if you consider uh, L, L2, L22, for example, and uh, this includes two passes. So first one is uh, this way, Q2 times 1 times 1. So it has measurement Q2. And on the other hand, the other one is so uh, 1, Q5. So we have L22 is Q2 plus Q5 in this case. So in this way, uh, we can define a uh, matrix L. In this case, we have three by three matrix. Then uh, actually, um, the, there is a network transformation which preserves uh, boundary measurement. So it is called the local moves. as follows. So uh, if we have uh, this kind of configuration with three crossing like this, and it has A, B, C as uh, at vertex vertices. Then we want to uh, transform this one. Uh, it is very similar to uh, braid relation. So change the ordering of the crossing like this, like this. Then uh, we have different variables, A prime, B prime, C prime at the vertices. Then uh, actually the boundary measurement of this uh, transformation is preserved if and only if A Prime, B prime, C prime are A plus um, B, C over A plus C, A plus C, and uh, A, B over A plus C. So uh, it is easier to know this phenomena by looking at the corresponding boundary measurement matrix, actually. So uh, to construct such a boundary measurement matrix, we divide on um, this crossings into three like this, and we consider a local uh, boundary measurement only for this area. So first, in this case, uh, we have one here, so one, one. Then uh, we have, so if you go from the so source two, then if go this way, we get A, so this one. If you go uh, this way with measurement one, then we go from two to two, and in this way, so we have uh, oops, this local measurement matrix. So it, it's easy to know that to know the O uh, boundary measurement, we just multiply the corresponding matrices like this. So in this case, we have this one, and for the third crossing, we have like like this. So actually, if you uh, write down the boundary measurement for this transformed one, and we see that so by substituting these variables, uh, the we have equality exactly like this. So in this case, uh, we have this part here first, and and so on. So. Uh, this way uh, to uh, represent the measurement is very uh, useful. And this is a, a first local move, and we call it uh, Yambakstar move. And the second one is much easier. So if you have two crossings of two wires like this, then uh, it is equivalent to
one clothing with measurement A plus B here. And uh, actually, if A plus B is zero, then I did nothing but a parallel two wires. So uh, you can check uh, this phenomena by using two by two matrices actually. So in this case, in the left configuration, we have so one A one times one B one. So it is nothing but one A plus B one. And if A plus B is zero, then it is identity matrix, so it is nothing but this. So in this way, uh, we can uh, so transform the given network by using these two uh, transformations. The second one is called uh, crossing, uh, merging, or removal uh, operation. So I write uh, CR for short. Then, uh, let's consider uh, the network corresponding to those uh, lux matrices. And uh, I for, uh, have to prepare a little bit more. So let's consider uh, two parallel wires on the cylinder. So we identify these two boundaries. And we have L uh, horizontal wires. And uh, so we have L sources and L sinks like this. And we assign uh, variables from A1 to AL for the first uh, vertical wire. For second wire, we assign B1, B2, BL. So uh, the boundary measurement of this uh, network is nothing but Q. Ah, sorry, first we should start with the first half, this one. So for this part, uh, um, the measurement matrix is so Q A Y. So this Y uh, appear, uh, um, appears because uh, we assume that uh, by uh, go, uh, if we go from low to top along this wire, then we multiply Y. This is a rule to uh, denote uh, periodicity in this direction. So because of this, uh, please recall the, the matrix. So we have uh, A1 if we go one to one, like this. And if we go from one to L, like this, then uh, the measurement is one, but because we go went across this wire, Y line, I shall name, so the measurement is Y. Then this stage, so if you go from two to two, uh, the measurement is A2. And if you, uh, you also you can go from two to uh, one, so it is one. So in this way, we get QAY as a local part of this one. So actually, uh, the, this, the, uh, the full network is related to QA, I abbreviate Y, so QA times QB. This is a boundary measurement for this uh, network. So uh, from now, we consider a network transformation as uh, QA times QB is changed to QB prime times QA prime for some B prime and A prime. So it means that um, the appearance of the network is the same actually, but only the variables on vertices uh, should be changed like this, B1 prime to BL prime and AL prime to uh, sorry, AL prime. But actually on this matrix equation, uh, is equivalent to the relation for variables as AK times BK is BK prime times AK 
one, this is the first equation, and second one is the k minus one plus a k is a k minus one prime plus b k prime. So it may remind you uh, to the what equation, but a little bit different. So on uh, this equation, uh, in these variables of a trivial solution as a k prime is b k and b k prime is a k. It is easy to know that is a solution. But important thing is that there is another uh, unique non-trivial solution. So actually, in fact, so this solution was first discussed, uh, discussed by Yamada and later uh, Lam and Priyabisky rediscovered by using metric. And Lam and Priyabisky and so, so um, there is, so we have a unique non-trivial solution to say uh, star. Uh, star. And in, uh, this was uh, shown by Yamada, but uh, Lam and Pilabisky showed moreover. Uh, so um, this is described by a composition of these two local moves, Jan Baxter moves and Crossing, uh, merging, and removal. So, and actually, um, this solution, non trivial solution, is uh, in general it is complicated. So, I write only the case L3 today. So, in this case, for example, A1 prime is B1 times A. A3, A1 plus B2, A1 plus B2, B3. And in the denominator, A2, A3 plus B1, A3 plus B1, B2. And so B1 prime is A1 times, and uh, so how to say, the, the interchanging of denominator and the numerator. This one. So for example, we also have A2 and B2 by shifting the indices. So uh, actually this uh, transformation is very famous for some people as uh, well known as geometric R matrix action. So, uh, which comes from the uh, symmetric tensor representation of UQA1. Uh, so, it, in Q goes to zero limit, uh, we get a piecewise linear uh, thing called the combinatorial R matrix. And combinatorial R, and this uh, geometric R is a kind of anti-tropicalization, detropicalization. So it means that uh, if you tropicalize this one, we get a combinatorial R matrix for a tensor product representation of A1 crystal. So SL2 case, the simplest case. Um, but uh, by using a network, we can uh, reconstruct the same uh, transformation. So, um, by using this map, so I call it R, R matrix action for two L2 of variables, we can formulate the Lux matrices. And so, like this. For a discrete KDV, so we start with uh, this one, 
uh, please compare this network with uh, that one, the Lux matrix for discrete case. We, we have QU times Q delta over U. So this is nothing but this network and on a cylinder. And we can assume uh, that it is on a torus. So we can identify these two boundaries too. Then uh, first we shift this network. So it means that we change the uh, fundamental domain on the torus uh, by shifting here to here. So we have, uh, so we start with QU times Q delta over U first, and we shift by one. And so we have Q delta over U times QU. Then we uh, shift to the source and sieve by this way. And next we apply our matrix transformation here. And so it is changed, but because these two uh, local, uh, two types of local moves don't change them, uh, don't, don't change the measurement. So in total, it is not changed, but in uh, inside, it is really changed as that. So uh, we write it as so. Write it as this. So please recall that A B is changed to B prime A prime. So this changed to uh, this in this way, and this is uh, nothing but the time evolution of discrete uh, total lattice. I'll call it discrete KDB, I'm sorry. So it was LT, and it gives uh, the next uh, time configuration. So it means that U prime is UT plus one, and this one is U uh, T plus one, delta over UT plus one. So this is what happens to discrete KDB by using the network. And for discrete TODA, uh, we have uh, that the inverse um, times two Q matrices. So um, this is depicted as this. So the P inverse uh, is the shift of wire by one in this way. And we have QW and uh, QQ here. Like this. So this is a Lux matrix at time T. Then uh, we apply uh, our matrix action to uh, for these two wires, and this is equal to uh, P inverse times QQ prime times QW prime. Then, uh, moreover, we apply uh, shift, shift to this one. So it means that I didn't draw the fundamental domain in this picture, but uh, we shift uh, by one and we get this uh, picture. And so in matrices, it means that QW prime the inverse to Q. Oh no, and this way. And so, but we want to get uh, the similar uh, as form as the first one. So we change it to P inverse EQW, um, P inverse on um, times QQ like this. And so this part is same as this one. And this part is, uh, should this is Q tilde. Yesterday is Q tilde, but I uh, denote it as uh, Q at time T plus one for W. And this is, sorry, this is a Q at, uh, for Q at time T plus one as this. So 
Then uh, now we obtain the lux matrix at time t in that way. So it is just uh, a simple, so how to say, reformalization of these uh, rational maps by using the network. Then the benefit to formulate on the system in this way is as follows. So uh, please recall that uh, we use the characteristic polynomial of uh, lux matrices to solve the problem. And its coefficients are preserved um, by the dynamics. And the characteristic polynomial is important. And so we have characteristic polynomial as determinant of lux matrix minus so x. And so in terms of the network, it is written as the summation of measurements as follows. So there is some, so we consider a norm crossing L tuple of um, L tuple of passes on the network, so from P1 to PL, and we can define a signature for uh, such a family of passes. So it is just, a, a, how to say, the sign signature of the element in parameterization group. So then, um, uh, as for the measurement, we might try all uh, weight is same as a measurement. So might try all uh, measurement of pass appearing in this term. So we can write down in this way. Then because uh, it includes two parameters x and y, we can expand uh, this this as a polynomial in X and Y, like this. And uh, let's write FAB for the coefficient. Then, actually, uh, this term is sign coherent. So, this is very important to consider the tropicalization of this um, characteristic polynomial, actually. And it consists of, so, uh, a pass consists of the, uh, a family of pass such that both uh, the y line, um, as I uh, draw there, y line for a times, because uh, it is term is y to a, and it contains, this family of pass contain B, uh, this is a new time, new notion, of left pass. And other L passes, L minus B, are known of left pass. And it's the sign, the coherence, so sign of this term is undetermined by some way, depending on A and B. Then uh, F is, is sign coherent. Ah, 
yes, I, I, yeah, I'm sorry, it, it's a new <laughs> notion here, yeah. So actually, x appears from this part, so it, it was not in the original network. So we add a notion to go uh, from, ice, from the ISOs to the ISYNC directory. So this is, a, how to say, exceptional rule for this network. Then, uh, it is easier to know the example. So let's consider discrete KDV of L is five, for example. So it has, uh, how to say, the oh, it's too, <laughs> too high. A lot like this. So let's consider the five, five wires here like this. And so in this case, uh, for example, if you consider the characteristic polynomial, then we have the following terms. So first we start with y square and y times um, the, that to five over u one, two, three, four, five. It just means u one times u two times so. And u one, two, three, four, five at the top term and minus x times uh, delta uh, q over u one, two, three, and so on. And this term has a sign minus here. And we also have x square uh, delta over u long for us. And so on. And moreover, we have uh, delta minus x uh, to pi, like this. Then uh, let's check. Uh, only a uh, small part. So let's check how uh, maybe it's easier. So you want to see how oh, uh, this uh, measurement appears in this network. So it is minus y x u one u two u three. Then uh, this is obtained on that on this network by considering, uh, sorry, uh, it, it's wrong. So I'm sorry, it's wrong. So this way, this way first, then we get, oh, it, it might be wrong, sorry. And, uh, it's wrong, I'm sorry, it was, so this, this was correct, <laughs> sorry, this one. So it gives uh, from one to five, and it is u one y because it go, went across this one. And next uh, we get u two uh, by uh, taking the path like this, and u three, and so we have from two to one and three to two, and the rest is so from four to four actually and from five to three and each uh, measurement is so u two u three it is a blocked path actually and so it is a usual path but the measurement is one so from five to three uh, we use this zigzag path and the rest is from four to four. Ah, so I didn't say that uh, in this uh, configuration, we have to use all sinks and source uh, once for each. Then uh, in this case, we have to go from four to four, but we cannot use usual network way. So in that time, uh, we use a blocked path. So, the, uh, except for this one, 
these four are non-crossing. So this is uh, what we do. And this signature, uh, signature is determined by the signature of the uh, parameterization of from 1 to 3, or 5 to 5, 1, 2, 4. This is minus 1. So we can uh, compute uh, the measurement in this way. And the important thing is that uh, by using the network and measurement, uh, this FAB is always sign coherent. Sorry? Ah, so uh, it has, how to say, for example, the uh, measurement appearing in this part, for example, all have sign minus. This is, yeah, this is very important to uh, take tropicalization of this one because the decreasing of valuation doesn't occur if time is not coherent. Uh, this one? Yeah, the whole, whole number. A whole, whole is number. irreducible in general. Yeah, yes. So it gives, uh, how to say, a good spectral curve. So uh, in the remaining uh, part is devoted to slide. So please switch on the slide. So this was a uh, uh, network for discrete uh, Bresner maps. Which? Oh, which, which part? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's what I want to say. So actually, so in my talk, so I pick up a uh, only a beautiful part of the story. So <laughs> actually, um, there um, possibly uh, they possibly include a not ugly part, but uh, in this story with the final goal is box mode system, it's a very beautiful part of. Um, let's, uh, yes, right, right. Yeah, yes, uh, the name, our matrix reminds you the bright yeah. Uh, yeah, somehow, yes, yes. Uh, but uh, it's a, not a statistical mechanics, so it, it's a deterministic one, but yeah, but if you, uh, uh, as I said, originally uh, this geometric R is related to combinatorial R matrix, and if uh, you put Q to get quantum group, it gives uh, undeterministic system in a statistical, me statistical mechanics. So uh, the trope, uh, geometric R is another deterministic counterpart. Yeah. So, but it is another story, so please allow me to go ahead. Uh, so, uh, so I finished to prepare uh, all tools I will need to uh, explain box mode system. So, uh, the third part uh, start. And so, box mode system, this is totally different story uh, for, uh, first. And um, this is a, a, oh, sorry. A several automaton uh, as follows. So let's consider an array of boxes. Um, each of them can contain only one ball at most. And we uh, assign a finite number of balls inside the boxes like this. And the evolution rule is as follows. 
So first, uh, we come from the left, and if we find a ball, then we move this ball to the leftmost empty box to the right. So this ball goes to this one, and next we this ball goes to this one because it is already occupied. So in this way, uh, after we move all balls uh, once, then we get this configuration, and we continue this way, like this. And so you see that um, the ordering of longer one and smaller one are interchanged <laughs> again. So this is a soliton, soliton phenomena, really. <laughs> then this time, so for simplicity, I write zero for empty box and one for occupied box. And you see really the uh, time evolution of solitons. So in this case, and the height of the wave is the length of the array of balls. And the velocity is the same as the length. So it is very interesting model, uh, understandable, understandable for, uh, also for kids. <laughs> yeah, it's very fun. And so what happens to this system? So actually this was invented by uh, Takahashi and Satsuma in 1990. So they tried to construct a uh, soliton-like uh, serial automaton by hand. And so let's see an, another example. So in this case, we have three solitons of length four to one. And as time um, pass, is passing, you see that the ordering of three are interchanged. And the remarkable thing is that we have some intermediate state, like three to two or something. So there is some sort of scattering occurs. So maybe it's easier to watch the first example. So sort of scattering occurs and uh, phase shifts. Phase shift also occurs. So if uh, this smaller one doesn't exist and this bigger one of rank three uh, propagate by three and three so on, but uh, actually because of the existence of the smaller one, it is pushed forward by four in this case. On the other hand, the small one is shifted uh, backward by four too. So this is uh, the phase shift uh, which occurs in this case. So it denotes the nonlinear uh, phenomena in the same split as I explained yesterday. Then, so as a summary, we have some scattering rule with phase shift. And moreover, this system has integrals of motion. Um, it is easier to know this uh, by watching at the time zero and five, for example, the rings and the uh, uh, number of solitons are preserved. In this case, four to one is preserved. But amazingly, uh, there is an algorithm to calculate this four to one, also for intermediate state. I will show the way soon. So at least uh, in, in this case, we have three solitons and with some uh, concert quantity related to the length and size and the number of solitons. Then uh, it shows a sign of integrability um, by observing many, many examples. So uh, we want to understand the symmetry of this system by using some mathematics. Yes, it will be the genus. Yes, right, so finite. Also, also, yes, yes, yes. It's the same as in the yesterday's story. So genus of the spectral curve is the same as now. So uh, for that purpose, uh, we want to go more detail of this system. So we consider the box ball system with carrier. So, uh, so we introduce a carrier with finite capacity. In this case, it, the capacity is two. So what happens is that, so uh, this carrier 
comes from left to the right. And if uh, this carrier look at, looks at this box, uh, if the carrier has an empty uh, part, so it rows both and go to the next box. And so in this case, by picking up two balls, uh, it is full. So it cannot road a ball anymore. So it uh, uh, doesn't touch this ball. And after it, the occupied uh, carrier comes to empty box, this unload uh, an empty box and so on. So uh, the final configuration is as this. So you see that uh, this ball uh, isn't moved. So the configuration is uh, not the same as before. So we consider this kind of model. So when the capacity is two, we write T2 for the time evolution for this system. And we have this configuration. But uh, there is, uh, so I have to say that soliton scattering occurs uh, also in this case. And uh, actually, the uh, integrals of motion uh, are the same as before. And so this is the case of capacity three. And in this case, uh, the time evolution is the same as the first rule. So it means that if the capacity is big enough, uh, the rule is the same as the original one. So, uh, I don't explain how to calculate the integrals of motion for general configuration, but uh, we can show that uh, integrals of motion are the same for all capacities, and these T, T, TK are commuting, actually. Then, uh, I, I'd like to say more about the box for system. There is a version of a box for system with periodic boundary condition like this. Then uh, its time evolution uh, says about the integrals of motion at the same time. So I'd like to explain this. So uh, we assume that the number of balls is less than the half of the number of boxes to make well define the system. And so uh, to make a time evolution, we connect uh, occupied box and neighboring occupied box and empty box by arcs like this. And after we uh, make a, such a pair, we ignore uh, the, these pairs and uh, we uh, look for a next pair like this, next neighboring pair and next pa neighboring pair. And after uh, we draw all arcs, uh, we uh, move both along these arcs and get this configuration. To continue in this way, uh, we can define the time evolution like this. So we identify this boundary with this one. Then, uh, uh, for simplicity, I write this way, and you can find the solitonic behavior again. Then, so in this case, uh, the situation is more, uh, how to say, easy to treat mathematically, actually. So let L be a period, then uh, it has a finite phase space. This is like, like this. Then uh, it has integrals of motion, actually. And now I'd like to show the way. So please recall that we draw arcs in time evolution. Actually, this uh, time evolution rule can be applied to the uh, original uh, infinite box ball system with infinite capacity space. And in this case, we can count uh, the smallest, the number of smallest arcs, a uh, second smallest and the biggest one. So we have two one one. Actually, this two one one uh, isn't changed. Uh, it is a conserved quantity actually. And by taking a transpose of this uh, one, we get a uh, three one. It is nothing but the number and size of soliton. So in this way, uh, we can compute uh, integrals of motion 
also for the intermediate state EZ. So in this case, we have smaller two arcs and one second smaller arc and the one biggest arc in the same way. So this is a periodic box wall system. And so to uh, show many things like solitonic behavior of uh, the existence of integrals of motion, uh, we uh, need some sophisticated description of this system, uh, not only uh, naive evolution rule. So the, there are two descriptions. And the first one is uh, given by using the vertex model. So uh, it's, it, for this description, we need a carrier. So uh, let uh, capital M be a capacity of the carrier. And the time evolution with carrier uh, is described by these four configurations. So if a box is empty and the carrier has M balls and it is less than, uh, sorry, uh, equal or less than M, then it uh, unrolls uh, the ball and the capacity uh, in carrier, we, uh, it has M minus one ball. And so if uh, there is a ball in a box, uh, if M minus is less than M, capital M, then it uh, loads the ball. So this configuration occurs and both uh, carrier and a box are empty, nothing occur and, and so on. So, so it is easy to know that all uh, time evolution is described only by these four configurations. Then, uh, this is an example of M is two case, the capacity is two, uh, vertex model description is given as this. So by uh, make a combination of this locally. Actually, um, these pieces are nothing but uh, the, what comes from the combinatorial R of the crystal base theory in the case of affine A1 type. So in this case, we only have uh, two states. Uh, uh, this, this is one dimensional representation and the carrier corresponding to the, to the M symmetric representation of the original quantum group. And so the combinatorial R matrix is an intertwiner of two uh, representations. So in this case, we have one dimensional and, uh, sorry, two dimensional and M plus one dimensional. So uh, it intertwines uh, the states, and this is nothing but these configurations. So I, I don't uh, talk about the detail of crystal uh, for today, but this is very much is uh, the combinatorial R. Then uh, once we uh, get this description, then it's uh, the corollary of this description that the Career with different uh, capacity commutes. So it is easy uh, if you know the R matrix structure of the time evolution. Then a second description is a more naive way. So evolution, we want to write down the evolution equation. So let uh, UTK is a number of balls in the case box at time t. So it takes zero or one. Then uh, in the case of infinite box ball system with uh, infinite kappa, uh, carrier, uh, the, the evolution is given by this formula actually, this one. Then actually this part is nothing but the number of balls in the carrier. So, it, so compare the uh, situation in the box and the situation in the carrier, and it determines uh, the next time configuration in this way. And also for the periodic case, uh, we can write down and the time evolution rule like, like this. It is more complicated, but it's, uh, it's possible. And the point is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, can I? Oh, a few minutes, thank you. Then uh, there is a fact that 
uh, these two are uh, tropicalization of the discrete KDB equation, which I will uh, explain tomorrow more detail. So it is the discrete KDB equation I introduced yesterday. And uh, we set uh, some specific boundary condition for uh, each case. So infinite BBS case at infinity uh, part, uh, we assume that there is no ball. So it means uh, you can, UTK is one. So in terms of the valuation, so valuation of, uh, so UTK should be uh, zero if K is uh, infinite, negative and positive. And in the case of periodic BBS, we assume just a periodic boundary condition like this. And then we set a valuation of U and other uh, real numbers like, like this. And the variation of this delta should be one, actually. This means the capacity of the box, uh, capacity of the box. And so by using this valuation and making a tropical limit, we get this equation. So then uh, you may uh, notice that why I introduced a discrete KDB with this <laughs> curious form. So it is closely related to the box ball system, which is the main topic of my talk today. So uh, this is the end of my talk today. Thank you very much.